forgiveness. Having a heart so pure that we seek to live an understanding of how imperfect we are as humans and ultimately understanding that our pain and our tribulations were all necessary in order for us to blossom into this beautiful thing that we are in God. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Kiki, and thank you guys so much for tuning in to my channel. I am back once again with yet another video, and this week, the subject line is going to be forgiveness. Not necessarily the most easiest thing to do, but the most necessary in our walk with God. So if you're interested in learning how you can let go of some of that baggage, how you can let go of some of that hurt, how you can let go of some of that resentment so that you can move forward into your season, keep watching. Understanding the components of forgiveness in order for us to effectively be able to practice it isn't something we discuss too often. However, it is essential in our walk with God and it's detrimental to our growth. We often associate forgiveness as being interrelated to our emotions when in fact they are two separate entities and should be treated as such. I'm sure you've heard the saying, I'll forgive, but I won't forget. This statement clearly identifies that there's still pain, there's still hurt, there's still some level of discomfort that was unpleasing to our spirit that lingers inside of us. We have allowed this hurt, we have allowed this pain to rent space within our hearts and in our minds that ultimately is going to hinder us from receiving the blessing and being where we ultimately need to be in order for us to move forward into our destiny. This pain that we have forgiven but not forgotten has not forgotten to rest in our hearts. See, one thing about forgiveness is that when we allow ourselves to forgive, we allow ourselves to forget. Because why? God is going to allow us to create a new heart. We have a new heart. We have a new mind in Jesus Christ. If we allow him to, if we see God and say, Lord God, I am messed up on the inside. Lord God, I am coming right now with resentment so deeply rooted in my heart. I am angry. I am confused. I am broken. Lord God, you are a healer. You are a doctor. Right now, I come before you as a broken vessel, Lord God, fix me. When we allow ourselves to become comfortable and allowing God to fix our brokenness and speaking about our brokenness, then God will provide something more for us. He will not only heal our broken wounds, but he will provide understanding. And that's where we want to be. We want to have a heart and a mind of understanding. It's easy to blame everyone else for the reason why we're messed up on the inside. It's easy to blame everybody else for our downfall and the reason why we can't get focused, the reason why we can't seem to move forward into our destiny. We want to say, oh my goodness, I blame you. I blame you for lying to me. I blame you for cheating on me. I blame you for your disloyalty. I, I blame you for abandoning me. I blame you. I blame you. I blame you. And therefore, when we are allowed ourselves to allow other people to have that much control over the fact that we are not where we are in life we're ultimately saying you know what God you have no power over this situation the devil controls what's going on right now because why because I'm operating in my flesh right now why because this person right now is not God and they're dictating what's happening in my life and therefore you're saying you know what God you can't possibly fix me and that is not a place we want to be we want to move forward in understanding that we are imperfect as humans. And as perfect as being imperfect is, it comes with its sacrifices. As a human, we are flawed. We're not perfect. And a part of being flawed means that we're going to hurt. We are going to disappoint. We are going to experience anger. We're going to experience frustration. We may experience confusion at one point in time, but we have to seek God. And when we seek God, we seek him and we seek his understanding. Proverbs fifteen fourteen states, The hearts of him who understands seeks knowledge, but the hearts of fools feeds on foolishness. This scripture is so profound in so many ways. First of all, it tells us right there that when we have understanding, we are seeking knowledge. We are trying to move forward. 
When we have understanding, we realize that certain things that we've been harboring in our hearts and in our minds have been completely unproductive. We have given certain situations, we have given certain people too much time, too much dominion over our lives that has caused us to be super unproductive, that has caused little to no success, that has been completely causing us to remain in a stagnant state in which God does not desire. God desires us to branch off and to be great. He desires us, our whole being, to be fit for bringing more people to the kingdom. We can't possibly do our work of the kingdom if we are manifesting in things that are negative, if we're allowing our past experiences to hold us down. We are no longer bound. We are no longer bind to chains. We, we demand right now that chains are broken. We speak life. We, we, we cast out any strongholds right now that is holding us back from that. And therefore, we are saying, you know what? We are forgiven. We are forgiven, so therefore, we are going to forgive. God says, I've forgiven you, so you, you, you have to go ahead and forgive. You have to get, forgive my people. We are so imperfect. We are perfectly imperfect human beings, and that's what makes us great. With that being said, let's get into the components of forgiveness. Number one, separate the act from the emotion. Identify the action that caused the pain. Number two, process the pain. Talk about the hurt. So often we do not want to talk about our hurt. We do not want to discuss our pain. We would much rather bury it under the rug, sweep it up, throw it away, put it in a log box, throw it in the ocean. Hopefully it falls 150 billion feet down. We do not want to deal with the hurt or the pain that we have experienced. So what happens is it never gets dealt with and it has it stays deep down inside of our hearts. But why are we doing that? God specifically says, come to me, place all of your burdens at my feet. I am here. I am a healer. I am your doctor. I want to help you patch up those wounds. All he wants us to do is consult him. Say, Lord God, I am broken. I am hurt. I need your help. And explain to him exactly what the hurt is. Explain to him exactly what the pain is. And I can guarantee you he's going to be right there, stepping right in. He's going to be there to heal those wounds. He's going to be there to patch up that, that spot. He's going to be there to smooth out those rough ends. All we have to do is just surrender it all to him and talk about it. Number three, when we are neglecting to prescribe forgiveness as a means to our pain, we are feeding ourselves poison. When we have the remedy for forgiveness, yet we still impose hurt in our hearts, we are poisoning ourselves and allowing ourselves to be susceptible to things that are evil, which is the will of the devil. We have the antidote, yet we don't feel worthy enough to give ourselves the cure. We're hurting ourselves. Number four, make a choice to forgive them. Choose to release them from any feelings that they may owe you or even the opportunity for them to betray you again. Understand that this is not giving them the permission to hurt you again. Instead, this act acknowledges how flawed we are. Once we acknowledge this human error, we begin to operate in the spirit of freedom and we have released them from any debt that they may owe us. It acknowledges that their actions are out of our control. Number five, thank God for his healing power because you are free. We are no longer bound by unforgiveness. We have broken the chains of resentment. We are walking into our divine destiny. We declare freedom right now in Jesus' name. Thank you guys so much for watching my channel. I hope that something that I said today touched each and every one of you guys so that you guys can apply it to your life. And again, guys, I hope you guys stay prayed up, stay blessed up, and stay bossed up. Until next time, guys, see you later.